So I've arrived at the seal. Free park. One good thing about doing things on a Sunday, it's less busy on the traffic. Well, because this is a complicated place, traffic-wise. Um, and it's quieter. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the parking's free. Well, I'm just going to put some decent walking shoes on, and then I'm off to find the church and take photos. This is Seal in Kent, where Ollie's ancestors come from, and that's what I'm doing here. Right, it's the um, Church of England, Diocese of Rochester. Welcome to the parish church of St. Peter and St. Paul, Seal. Yeah, there's one old pub. It might be called the King's Head or something like that. That's very old. It was an old coach house, and that's been not demolished, but it's going to be converted into residential accommodation, I think. An old gentleman was telling me. There's another co old coach house. I can't remember what it's called now, but I went in there to use the ladies. Then I went down a place called Pudding Lane to another pub called the Five Bells. And now I'm in the churchyard looking for Farrants and other people I should have looked really before I came, shouldn't I? Because I've got my memory so bad. Farrant is one of the names, but it might stick out if I if I recognise if I see one. It might I mean, it might, I mean I've got all the information in the car, but I haven't brought it with me. It's, Normally I check, I bring the family tree with me. Because they're associated names. Right, I'm just going in the church at Seal. I suppose they've had all their services this morning. So it's unlocked. relatives. I've got to go back to the car because I, I've forgotten some of the surnames. I'm going to bring the car up here. Oh, there's some very old graves in here. There's one here. It goes back to, it's Shoebridge is the name. And it's somebody who died, William Shoebridge, who died September the 8th, 17, it could be 87, age 48. shoe bridges here. There's a whole row of shoe bridges. There's one um, Mrs. Anne Shoebridge, daughter of the late William and Anne Shoebridge of this parish, who suddenly departed this life in 1818, age 62. There's William um, Jane, daughter of William and Anne Shoebridge. She died in 1800, age 32. So I'm just doing a few because it seems to be quite an. There's what's the other one? Holmden. Holmden. Some very big old graves here. So I might take a picture of a group of those. Because no doubt the Ferrants would have known them. Of course, when I'm doing the tree in the beginning, it's very fresh in my mind. Masters is another name that keeps cropping up a lot. It's going off for a minute. Struck gold. Found a Bashford. In loving memory of Edward Bashford, who died July the 8th, 1886, in his 81st year, and Margaret Bassford, who died October 15th, 1886, in her 81st year. He 
he died in July and she died in the 88, she died two years later in the October. What could be a connection? The name Miles rings a bell, so I'm going to take a picture of this grave of Thomas Miles, who died 1888, he's 55. I don't expect there's any link, but I keep finding shepherds and not far away cells, but of course this is in a different part. The top right, just turning over a minute to the other side. There we go. Right, there's a great big monument in this graveyard to Charles Henry Ma Mills, first Baron Hillingdon, born 26 April 1850, died April 3rd, 1898. Beyond these voices, there is peace. Also to Lu Louisa Isabella, his wife, and daughter of the third Earl of Harewood. And then you've got Patrick Charles Hillingdon, 1906 to 1982. Herbert Alexander Lawrence, fourth son of the first Baron Lawrence of Punjab and Gratley, 1861 to 1943. Military family, yeah. Then Colonel something Honor Cremont Mills, third son of the first Lord Hillingdon, beloved husband of Florence Mills. Also, Florence's wife, she died in uh, 1959 89. So that's a big monument to them. I'll take a picture of the ordinary camera. I've got a feeling that is a relative of Ollie's, so it's, this is never a waste of time coming to these graveyards. This is um, Seal Graveyard in Kent, where I am, near Seven Oaks, and I've, I'm looking for Bashfords and Farrants because I've, I'm not sure if I've brought any more of the tree with me to look for older names and things aren't really ringing bells but here we've got Edward Bashford I said this earlier um, and Margaret Bashford I'm just trying to point out I, mean, she, I can't remember her name <sighs> I really can't remember what her other name was now which is silly isn't it really <laughs> I haven't brought all that information but anyway in front of them yeah her maiden name was Hook You've got this giant Celtic cross, and it's for Neville Forbes, uh, the only son of uh, of Godden Green, who died in 1883. Um, or was he born at? No, born 1883. Died at Oxford, 9th of February 1929. There's a whole family in here. It's quite a big one. Um, people that the Forbes I think they're Forbes and Ashby's Forbes and Ashby's just gonna take a picture of it with the Bashford grave behind you only got to find one to make the visit worthwhile and that could be one of her great great grandparents so n none of it's ever wasted but like I said I, I'm surprised I didn't bring the whole tree. It might be in another book. Which makes it very difficult for the rest of because I thought I would have had the whole of that tree. I really did. I can't believe that I haven't done Richard Farrant and had him. I must have it somewhere because I was going to do him so I could go back. It does annoy me when I make these mistakes. It could be in the car still. I should be going back in a minute to inquire. I just want to finish off scanning, just in case I come across something. Then I'm off to a place called Kemsing. I mean, it, it is really remarkable, the scenery. This churchyard is set on a hill overlooking a beautiful rural community. I mean, what spoils it? You can hear a main road. 
and it could be that the the church I can see another church here across the valley there with a pointed tower that could be one I end up on in a minute Kemsing they always get interesting names in graveyards isn't it like death We've got one here William Slaughter you know I mean is it, is it goose lot Gooseneck was another one I came across once. Yeah, there's lots of old graves here. Of course, there are a lot of them are colour placard. But there's lots of old, really, really old graves here. That haven't been... And what amazes me as well is um, in some graveyards, so half of these wouldn't be allowed. They wouldn't be allowed, half of them. they're leaning over such a lot they'd be pulled down in in Western Supermare <laughs> right well we found one that was visible right anyway go back to the car I found the relevant bit of tree. We got Farrance. Well, Richard, he died in Newisham anyway. Then Alexander Farrant, married in Plaxtol. He married Elizabeth Latter. Then you've got Edward. We got yeah. I found their grave. I found the grave of Edward. Is that amazing? And there's hook. So I'm going back in there just to look at the hooks. Oh, lots of big gaps, but this is me actually wandering back to the graveyard to look for some hooks. There were some in there, but I never actually found them again. Anyway, wait, what happens is, I realise we've got hooks, mashbirds, pharynx, um, and somebody else I've already forgotten. <laughs> My memory is so bad. Man, it's, that's it. So it was Edward Bashford and Margaret Hook was her maiden name. But of course, I'm not going to record every Bennett I see because that's further back in time that's um yes we actually, I've actually found um Ollie's grandmother's grandmother which is good isn't it so if it's her grandmother, it's her mother's great-grandmother, so it's Ollie's times two great-grandparents, I found. There was another name, I can't think of it now, but if I see it, it'll, it'll remind me. 